Welcome to Tech in the Car. This is the Hyundai Ionic 5. This is an infotainment guide. I'll explain to you what everything does, how it works. You can skip through the chapters to find the bits that are relevant to you. A big massive thank you to Brooklyn Hyundai Seaford for lending me this car and letting me make this video. Hopefully it'll help you. Please give them a visit if you're after a Hyundai and give this video a like and subscribe for more on the channel. All right, let's get into it. So there are two 12 inch touchscreens in front of me here. There's your navigation infotainment screen and there's your driver's display. So the first thing to look at with this infotainment system is an overview of the whole thing. So we have the start stop button down here for the car. Then we have these hard buttons here. We've got a volume control and power for the infotainment system. We have the button which takes us to the map. We've got the button that takes us to navigation. We've got our media button, a shortcut button, a tuning button, which is basically allowing you to press up and down to tune. And then we've got your camera button, which will open up the camera and your parking sensors button, which will turn the parking sensors on and off. Now this might be different on different versions of the Ionic 5. This is the premium model. Underneath it, we have these capacitive touch sensitive buttons for your climate control. If I tap on auto, you'll see it will turn on those little screens at the side, which will show you the temperature and I can adjust it like this. And I can adjust the fan speed by pressing the fan button or I can press off and then it will turn it down and if I hold it down, it will turn it off altogether. So that's quite simple to use. Okay, let's look now at the infotainment screen in front of us. So you'll see we have from left to right, EV, map, navigation, phone, phone projection, voice memo, climate, radio, media, heating for your seat and your steering wheel if you have it, valet mode and settings. And then we can swipe across here. We've got quiet mode, blue link, Hyundai Live, notice and manual. And then at the top of the screen here, we have a little home button, which will take us back to the home screen, which will then show us an overview of what is happening. So our current battery, our current location, our temperature and radio media off. And then it will obviously, if you swipe to the other side, take you back to your main app screen. And the other thing too with this that you can see, which is interesting is you can see it says guest up there. So when you turn the car on, it will actually prompt you who you want to log in as, whether you want to be a guest or you can set up your own profile, which will let you adjust the settings to your own desires. And you can change users very easily like this. Let's just keep it in the mode it's in right now. So let's tap on EV first. Now EV shows you your electric car status. It's pretty self-explanatory. And you can see here, it's showing us the nearest charging point for the car and it's showing us our current battery and our mileage range here. And then we've got a split screen view. So it says radio media off. Underneath it, you can see a departure time. So you can set the electric charging. So it starts at a certain time and finishes for a certain time. And you can turn that on and off by tapping this button and you can have it so it turns on and sets itself to a certain temperature that you want. That lets you go back. And then you've got the button here, which again lets you adjust the target you want your car to be charged at. And then last but not least, V2L, which actually lets you charge another vehicle as we discussed through the two-way charging system that this car has. Up here, we've got a little menu button, by the way, and you can click display off, eco driving, energy consumption manual, and you can turn the split screen on and off. I think the split screen is worth having because it gives you more information on the screen and you can scroll through whatever and see more information. And I like that personally, but you can turn it off if you want to. And let's look at map. So map, very self-explanatory, will show us where we are right now. Obviously the other thing you can do with this is you can quite clearly set a destination. But the interesting thing about this is there is actually a separate button for that. So if we go back out of here, I can click on navigation and then it will show my navigation options. So now I can search by points of interest, previous destinations, address books, Hyundai service, Hyundai Live. So if we click on previous destinations, so I previously typed in Manchester. And if I click on Manchester here, it will now bring it up here like this. And then I can set as destination. And it will now go out the route to Manchester airport and you'll notice that it says a battery charge is insufficient so it will Start tell you to search for a charging point and it will recommend some charging points along the way now obviously you can choose something close to you if you choose something further away let's go with Cobham services add to a point and then calculate 
And so now it will calculate the distance and how to get there for you. And there we go. And now it's telling me it will take me four hours, 48 minutes, 273 miles. The range on this car is currently 265 miles. So it doesn't need much charging. I've opted to charge along the way and it's letting me do that. Okay, the next thing on here, phone. Phone is very self-explanatory. It will connect to your phone via Bluetooth, show your contacts, show your favorites, show your messages. Very, very simple to use. Very self-explanatory. Phone projection is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which we'll come back to in a little bit because there's nothing connected to that, but we'll come back to that. Voice memo. Voice memo lets you make a note of whatever you want to make a note of, and then you can delete them as well if you want to later. I'm going to turn off the split screen now so we get full screen because I think that looks better. Now let's go to climate. So obviously we've got the buttons under here, but we also have the ability to control it using the touch screen. And I can set all these climate settings. So it's got some cool stuff here. Auto dehumidify, smart ventilation, auto defog. And front heating will also let you adjust the heat in the front seats as well. And then we have radio. I like this old style design here with the tubes. And then I can change between them. And I can at this point use this little tune button underneath to tune through the different radio stations, which is quite handy like that. But I mean, this is all very self-explanatory so far. Then we can go to media. Well, media will now give you some options for calming sounds. So this is a rainy day. Living in England, we don't need a raining day effect. Lively forest. Calm ocean wave. And let's say you're one of those people that works best when you're in a coffee shop like I do, you can now sit in your car and imagine you're in a coffee shop because there's a noise of the people in the coffee shop. I can't make out what they're saying. I don't know how they did that. Warm fireplace. That'd be great on a cold night with the heating on. And snowy village with the snow. So, you know, that's pretty, pretty cool. And you can have it like a list if you prefer not to have it like that. Obviously, the thing with media is if you have a device which is connected to it, then it will come up and show you that. So whether that's USB or Android Auto. Heating takes you through to your seat heating setting, very simply. Valet mode. So valet mode is available for if you're giving your car to somebody and they're basically parking it for you or you're going away on holiday and leaving it in a car park. We control that as well. Then we have our settings. So this now takes us into our settings. So we have our vehicle settings. So this is where it lets you adjust stuff like the smart cruise controls. This car has a lot of smart safety features. So you can link it to your drive mode. So depending on the mode on the steering wheel, it will then adjust that for you. You can also do it based on driving style. And then it will analyze your driving style and tell you how it thinks you drive. We've got our driver assistance settings. We've got our smart cruise control, which can be linked to the drive mode or based on your driving style. We've got our driving convenience, which includes your motorway driving assist and your lane change assist. And obviously your motorway auto speed change. So it will actually slow down and speed up as it sees the signs. You've got your speed limit warning, which will warn you if you go over the speed limit, your warning timing and your warning volume. In our drive mode settings, we can have the brake mode as normal. So this is allowing us to adjust the regen and braking. So dynamic driving, let's put it into sport. And now it will adjust the regen driving mode for that. Then we've got eco vehicle. This is our recuperation again. So we want strong recuperation. Do you want it to lock the charger? Yes. When you're out and away. And then your cluster. This is the information shown in the middle here. Climate, do you want automatic ventilation? Do you want to have your defog and defrost options? Internal air circulation, giving you a lot of control over this. Lights, headlight timeout and headlight high beam assist. Your doors, do you want to lock when you shift? Do you want to unlock when you approach? How fast do you want the tailgate to open? That's very interesting. Smart tailgate, there we go. If you've got the key and you approach it, it will automatically open. That's quite cool. And then the opening height, do you want it to open all the way or do you want it to open only part of the way? That's very cool. Convenience, wireless charging system in the middle here. And that's the car settings. Navigation settings, allowing you to adjust whether you're 
position the speakers are, the equalizer, phone connection, Bluetooth, USB. Do you want it to connect automatically? Do you want Android Auto to use a split screen? Do you want Apple CarPlay to use a split screen? And you can adjust it to left or right hand steering. So the home button is on a different side here. And then we've got our voice recognition, which is allowing you to talk to it. And then we've got our profile, which again, we've been through, which we're able to change your profile. We've got our theme layout. So I've turned this to black, but you can just easily change it to white. And then you have a white background. This is how the car is set up when it arrives to match the background there. I personally prefer black, but you have the option. You have your screensaver. You can have a different type of screensaver, digital clock or analog clock, and of course your split screen and what can be shown on the split screen there. And then we've got our display settings, which would be the brightness of the settings on here and the blue light filter. Do you want that on or warm? So let's turn it up so it will make it warmer. Extend rear camera use. So this allows the rear camera to stay on even if you're not reversing, if you press the button for it. And then button. So what does the favorites button do? The custom button do? You can adjust it to be blue link, white mode, display on off, high and do live. And then you can also adjust the custom button on the steering wheel, which is here. And also what the mode steering wheel button does, which is here, which allows you to change between the various modes yourself. And you see sounds of nature, USB music, USB video, DAB, FM, AM, phone projection and Bluetooth audio. And then Blue Link, this is Hyundai's way of connecting the app and finding all your car settings, seeing what the charge level is and being able to adjust those from the app. I can't demo that to you here because I don't have access to it, but it's a cool feature. And then obviously your general settings. And then we have quiet mode, which will limit the value to 25 and only playing the front seat. So the back in theory should be more quiet. Blue link again, which is using the app to connect and see your status, but you need the app for that. And it's not active on my car. And then we do have our Hyundai Live, which will show whether there's roadworks, charging stations, which are in the area. and also live parking as well. Notice, which is notifications, if you get anything coming through there, and your manual, if you want to access your manual, you can scan the QR code and then it will bring it up on here. That is how that works. There's a lot going on here, but it is very straightforward in what it shows. So this is Android Auto, and you'll see now the Android Auto logo appears up there. I can tap on it and it will show me on here my location, Spotify, everything that you would expect to find on Android Auto. You note that it is to the left-hand side of the gauge cluster. You can then, with a split screen, show different information on the side here and scroll through. So I think this is useful because otherwise you just have a space on the side which has Android Auto. And then, you know, you can use it just like you would expect to use Android Auto. Everything is there. We've even got these new little games that you can play on Android Auto. And now we have CarPlay on here as well. And it works just like CarPlay would work normally. Now, one thing which is interesting about this is, like I said, you have an ability to go through and to have the split screen. So let's turn the split screen off on CarPlay. So let's go to Apple CarPlay. Let's turn split screen mode off. If we turn off split screen mode, you now get full screen Apple CarPlay, which is very cool to see which gives you access to lots of your apps just on a larger screen. Android Auto doesn't, for whatever reason, work like that on this system yet. Hopefully that will change. So you can't get full screen Android Auto, but you can get full screen Apple CarPlay. All right, let's look at the driver cluster now in the middle here. So it's very, very simple. On the steering wheel, we have some capacitive touch sensitive buttons and those buttons can be used to control it. So there's a little button here, which lets you change through the various bits of information on the screen. So you can see your last break, you can see your driver information, you can see your navigation information and your tire pressure. And then we have our drive mode button. And when we press the drive mode button, it goes from eco, which changes the design, to normal, to sport, which goes all red and cool. And you can see on the screen here, you've got your range, you've got your total mileage, you've got down here on this mode, you've got your torque, and then you've got the mode, the temperature, and then auto hold, Again, battery information, your traffic sign speeds, and your current speed. And this information stays the same when you're on here. Obviously, in eco mode, you then have your 
efficiency down there. In normal mode, you keep the efficiency down there. In sport, it's your torque. So that's very interesting to see. And the torque there is up to 100%. And you can see the status of your gear shifting as well. So very, very simple. Talking about the steering wheel, you can choose your modes, which will adjust that, your voice control, your volume up and down, your phone, your favorites button, drive mode, which I showed you. This lets you change through your driver information in the center of the driver cluster. This is your cruise control and lane assist buttons, all three of these. This lets you set the lane assist, this lets you set the cruise control, and this lets you set the limiter, and you can adjust the distances here. And then I can also scroll through the information here, as you can see, in this mode by pressing that button. How far is the Manchester airport and my tire pressure? So it's a very simple system to use. Hope you enjoyed this video on the infotainment system on the Hyundai Ionic 5. Please give Brooklyn Hyundai Seaford a visit if you're interested in a Hyundai. Please give me a like if you found this video useful and subscribe as well. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. Thank you very much, everyone.